Hello, DC Metro Rail producers. I'm here with the wonderful Minor Herrera. Thank you so much for being with us. Of course, thanks for having me. Absolutely. He is our March cover. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely do so. Um, Minor, actually, when he started, and I'm going to show you the picture right here. So uh, definitely check that article out. Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so. Miner started 13 years ago. His second year, he did over $10 million. And, you know, two of the last three years, he's done over 100 units and um, 40 to 45 million. So definitely want to listen to what this guy's got to say. So, Miner, you could do anything. You're a really smart guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, why real estate? Tell us a little of the, the background to how that happened. So it's a really long story. I don't know if we have enough time today, but I will tell you that uh, I bought my first place when I was about 23 going on 24 in downtown Bethesda. Uh, because my dad kept pushing me. He's like, you gotta buy a place. No, he was saying, you gotta go to grad school. I was like, I'm not going to grad school. <laughs> He's like, you gotta buy a place, you gotta buy a place, and if you don't go to grad school, I'm like, if I do that, will you get off my back and I live my own life? And he's like, yeah. I was like, great. So I shaved, I saved up my DJ money. I was a DJ back then. I had a nine to five at DJ on the side. That sounds like fun. It yeah. was fun. Uh, it was wicked, wicked, wicked fun. <laughs> um, so I saved up the DJ money, and about six months later, I was able to uh, accumulate $10,000, and I bought a condo in downtown Bethesda, two bedroom, one bath, uh, for $99,000. Wow. It was crazy. Um, and so here I was, some young kid, and uh, my mortgage was 700 My roommate paid 650 a month. Don't tell him. Shh, don't watch this, Mike Pat. Uh, <laughs> and um, that was my first experience with real estate, and the realtor was not that great. I actually had to fire my realtor, my first one. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, market went up, had a lot of equity, was playing flag football with a gal who was a title attorney, taught me about equity, and um, we were refinancing the condo, and she's like, oh my gosh, you have like $200,000 in equity. I was like, I don't even know what that means. Uh, and I blurted it out <laughs> one day, I'd love to own a place at the beach. And she's like, you have enough you money could. to do that. Yeah. And so I did. I took money out and people were like, oh, you should go on vacation or buy a car. I'm like, I don't know if that's how it works. It's like a credit card, you have to pay it back. And so I bought a place. And the realtor that I used to buy a place at the beach was not that great either. Um, and I had a realtor help me rent it out who was not that good either. Um, and I took it over myself and I generated as much income they did in my first month that they did an entire year. And I was like, huh, that was easy. So I bought another place. And so by the time I was 30, we had three places, two at the beach, and I was doing all the work myself. And every experience that I had with a realtor was not, not as great. <laughs> and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to get my real estate license so I can handle my own transactions. And I did. And this was 2005, if you can imagine those years. And so my real estate class started with like 100 people and it ended with 30. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it ended with 30. And I made sure I was just a little bit competitive back then. Um, back then. And I wanted to stay till the end of the class so I could figure out who the top graduating student was and I could use that as part of my marketing and lo and behold, I had the highest score. So part of my marketing used to say, number one student, top graduating realtor from the Weikert Real Estate Academy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's why I still have the other. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of how I got into handling my own transactions. While I was doing the class, I thought, oh my gosh, this is like a real job. Like people do this for a living and they're not that good. And so I thought I could do it better, and lo and behold, I did in 2006 when the market was going down. Uh, and mind you, 2006 was the year my son was born, my first son. And my wife, who's Norwegian, Scandinavian country, uh, they get a year off with, um, with their salary. And she's like, well, I'm gonna take a year off. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa we don't do that here. It's terrible, we don't do that here. And so we negotiated. I think and that's great, like, though. No, yeah. no, it, believe me, it was great. Uh, that was 13 years ago. Uh, never went back, but she does work for the team now. So the um, point is, is that she negotiated with me, and she's like, well, in Norway, we get 12 months off. I was like, well, here, you got like six weeks. And so she took 10 months off. So you see who won that negotiating <laughs> now. She's a good and negotiator. She's very good. This is why she's on the team now. Uh, so we did that in 2006 and we started going up. We were doing really, really well at a time where people were getting out of the business. So it really worked out well. And my dad was not thrilled that I was taking a job of 100% commission when we had three mortgages, a new baby, in, in a field that I have zero experience in. Uh, but my wife was super supportive, so we rolled the dice, and here we are, what, how many years later? Yeah, wow. yeah. So that's the story. 
That's a great story. <laughs> is that our time? Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so what, what has been, I mean, that's great. Good job on that negotiating there. Uh, what has been your biggest challenge as a realtor? Well, the challenges have evolved year over year, right? Every time it's something different. Um, you know, first it was, hey, how do we break in? How do we get clients, right? Um, and I didn't know how to get clients. I just knew that if I did an open house every weekend, I was likely to meet people. So that became my thing. Then getting the clients was, was good. And I was like, okay, I have people to follow up with. Um, eventually became, uh, how do I follow up with all these people? I, I didn't have enough time, right? How do I keep the business growing while handling all the administrative work? It was how do I leverage myself out? And so that lesson took me about five years, five years, uh, before someone said, hey, you should hire an assistant. I was like, what, me, pay a salary out of my own pocket? That's crazy. Um, and so I tiptoed into it just like everybody else did, um, virtual assistants, part-time, full-time. And then from there, it was like, okay, how do I, I'm showing houses, I can't show more than two or three buyers. So again, it was a leverage questing, right? So it's always a triangle, right? It's always, where do we get the leads? Where do we get the listings, right? And leverage, right? And so it was handling all of those things. I wasn't able to verbalize what the issues were at all those times, but in retrospect, I realized, okay, how do I get the leads? How do I get the listings? How do I get the leverage? And eventually I became from a realtor uh, into a business owner which has its own unique set of challenges, right? Because we know um, those who can do, those who can't teach is kind of what we say. That for me to continue to evolve as a business owner, not just a realtor, but a business owner, it was a whole nother ceiling of achievement that I had to break through and I had to do something differently each time to break through those ceilings of achievement. So for me to say, hey, what has been my, my biggest thing to break through? It's hard because at every increment, it was always something different. How do I let go of a buyer? Like, no, 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 this buyer only wants to work with me because I'm the greatest thing. No, that's not the case. They wanted to work with the service that we represent, right? Because if we didn't do it, there's 12,000 other realtors that could do it. And so how do we, how do we learn to um, engage in a team concept, right? So growing that. Then it was how do we find the right people for the team? Then it's how do we train the team? How do we motivate and lead the team? How do we retain the team? How do we continue to grow, focus on listings, work on admin, 401ks, all these things that I never, I was like, I just want to sell houses, right? That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to hang out with people and drive around and not have hours, right? Take all the vacations I want. So every year has posed a unique set of challenges and that's kind of what's kept it interesting as well. Sounds like fun. Uh, what about most rewarding right now for you? Like what's most rewarding for you right now in your business? Uh, growing a business, right? It's no, not so much helping one individual person that helping other realtors help other people, right? Is casting a vision big enough so that members on my team can realize their own dreams, right? That's been huge for me. Helping every individual client, it's a beautiful thing. There's nothing more exciting than sitting there and saying, hey, you know what? We, we did what we said we were gonna do. We sold your house for like $200,000 more than everyone thought and it appraised. Everything is awesome. Now you're gonna buy an even bigger house, right? It's gonna be awesome. Everyone's hugs, kisses. Oh, it's, there's nothing like that feeling, right? When people are smiling and they're just like, some people cry. I mean, those are great things, right? Achieving the American dream of home ownership, home ownership is huge, huge, right? Um, so that's awesome. But what's really awesome is helping your team members achieve their dreams, helping them buy their, their big beach homes, right? Helping them put their kids through college. Um, that sort of thing is really, really exciting to me. How does that fit in, like, so how does it fit into your dreams and goals now, real estate? I mean, you started out buying houses and, mm -hmm. and it, you know, what is, how does it fit now in your dreams and goals? Real estate as a whole? So um, real estate as a business is something that I really, really enjoy. Um, yet over time, we've started to parlay, you know, real estate investments, right? Do we want to do a title company one day or something like that? There's so many business opportunities that stem from the initial real estate investment, right, as a career. And so it all, sort of like you, everything revolves around real estate for us, whether you're personally buying and selling and investing or you're helping others buy, sell, and invest. I mean, that for us has been really, really great, uh, but we want to grow a portfolio where we have 
rental properties. I used to joke I wanted to have one for each kid, but I only have two kids, so um, unless we're going to adopt more, we have plenty of properties to give away, <laughs> right? So it was retirement home, but I'd love to have you know a place where my parents can go and just chill at the beach, put their sand, their feet in the sand without having to rent it out. I mean, um, having a big real estate portfolio that's not only working for us, but that we can enjoy is something that I really, really want to do and making sure that we have a lot of um, businesses that are cottage industries as a result of the real estate transaction is also a big piece of it as well. That's great. Mm -hmm. Define success for us. What does success mean for you? Uh, being able to do what I want, when I want, with <laughs> who I want. I think that's pretty standard, that's, right? That's a pretty great definition of success to cool. me. Um, tell us a little bit more about your family, please. Like, you light up when you talk about your family. I do, yeah. I do. Okay, so family, you know, I'm Latino if you can't tell. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is a black and white screen. Um, but family is a very, very big thing. I suppose it's a big thing for everybody, but for us, it's really, really big. Uh, it's fundamental. Um, you know, we, we, when we think of family, we don't think brother, sister, we think cousins, and like my grandparents, I know my grandmother's four siblings and all of their kids down past my generation. So when That's we cool. go back to Guatemala, which is where I'm from, um, there's like a huge, huge group waiting for us at the airport, and it's just like constant parties and never ending. It's really just family hanging out, right? Um, so for me, family is essential. It all starts uh, and stops there. For me, I went to DeMatha, which is the greatest high school ever. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's the greatest high school ever. And they taught us at a very young age that our priorities were always um, God, family, school, then sports. Sports kind of crept up a little bit, but that was kind of like, so family is, is essential for me. Um, you know, my parents never missed anything when I was growing up, even though we didn't have much, but they were always there, right? And so I want to do the same thing for my kids. And so I've become that father who's overly involved. You know, we started at the Bethesda Chevy Chase Ruth Wrestling Club because I have two kids that wrestle, right? And I couldn't let them be on their own. Um, somehow I'm coaching soccer and I never even played soccer. I know it's a dirty little secret. My dad was a big <laughs> soccer player. I never played. But why am I coaching, right? I'm just overly involved. Um, you know, with my wife, we always plan trips on our own as well, not just with the family, but on our own. Um, my oldest son, we were in Norway recently, where she's from, and uh, we took a long weekend trip to Sweden. And that's been my oldest son goes, we're the only family who takes a vacation while they're on vacation. <laughs> it's like, That's great. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a lot of time for that. You know, my parents, I talk to, uh, if not every day, every other day, we see each other at least once a week. My sister's on the team. She lives in our neighborhood. Family is really, really super important. It's kind of the driving force in a lot of things, even though I always expect them to be taken care of. Uh, every decision that we make usually revolves around what's best for them. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little about like what you're learning right now? What am I learning? So we're a learning based team. Um, it's one of our yeah, it's one of our beliefs on our team. So there's a lot going on. I don't know if you've heard of it. This social media thing, it's gonna be huge. Right? <laughs> it's gonna be huge. And um, so I'm learning more about how to stay engaged with a lot more people using social media. And it's become um, you know, for me, I may not look it, but I'm too old to be on Instagram. Uh, you know, the scrolly thing when they ask you, I don't think it goes to my year of birth. So uh, <laughs> I need to get on Instagram, I know. Uh, I have an old account that I forgot the password, so I gotta start a new one. Um, I'm learning about social media, but I'm actually reading right now Grits. Um, which I, worth, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, the psychologist, right, or psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting because a lot of that was innate with me already, you know, the, the the driver, the hard working, go get it, let's get it done. Hey, that's why I'm not wearing a sports coat right now. I like, take it off. I'm like, let's get to work, right? Let's roll up the sleeves. And so uh, I'm learning about grit. Uh, I'm trying to raise my leadership lid to ensure that I'm, I'm becoming the person that my team needs me to be, right? Um, for them to grow, who do I need to be for them to continue to grow? So I'm working on social media and uh, leadership. I'm trying to grow my leadership lid. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit like about like hobbies or interests outside of the business? Uh, so people say I used to be an athlete. No, I'm still an athlete. It's all up here. It may not be here anymore. Right? <laughs> the V might be on, right? This is clearly not the new iPad, right? That, <laughs> that I used to have a V and a six pack and it was great. And um, uh, so I'm still very athletic. I run, I had a run this morning. Um, I love running. 
Yeah, uh, three, four times a week I love running. Uh, like I said, I coach my kids' soccer team. Um, I started the Bethesda Chevy Chase Youth Wrestling Club because my kids were too good. They got kicked out of the league that they were in, so we have 65 families for that. That's a nonprofit. We have three teams on that. Um, you know, I'm on the board of NARAP, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Um, I'm probably overly involved in a lot of different areas. Um, we do love to travel. Uh, I do love hanging with my kids. You know, I actually watch TV still. I do find time for that. <laughs> Stranger Things, we just finished that. <laughs> oh my gosh, we just watched that so. too. Um, it's kind of scary, but yes. <laughs> um, what sets you apart or like makes you different, minor? Well, uh, a lot of people say I'm a, kind of a cliche because I'm short, dark, and handsome. Um, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think what really sets me apart is that um, it may come off sometimes that I have a, a huge ego, and, and I tell my team one of the biggest regrets that I have about the team name, it's called Minor and Associates, is that it has my team in it, and it's not about me. It used to be about me. Uh, but it's not about me anymore. It's really more about you guys, right? And how do we get you to fulfill your dreams, right? And all that kind of thing. And, um, you know, just like my athletic prime is behind me, it's about my kids, right? How do I get them to perform at their highest level? Um, you know, whether it's soccer or cross country or wrestling or whatever sports, you know, they're, they're into. Um, or I will say with my oldest, it's now guitar, singing, and theater. Um, he's really good. I'm not sure where I went wrong as a parent. Uh, <laughs> but it may not be athletics, but uh, it's no longer uh, about me, right? I mean, that's kind of the realization that we start to get into as we get older. Um, and as I'm saying that, I'm starting to lose myself and thought that I forgot the original question. <laughs> what was the question? Oh, no, it was, it was about um, what sets you apart makes you different. Ah, so um, for me, it's, there's a genuine touch, you know, uh, when I speak to people um, with regards to being engaged in that particular moment. Um, what is it that we can do to help? How can we connect them to somebody else, right? We joke with our clients, hey, anything that you need, contractor, landscaper, refinancing, do you want to know who to bet on for the Redskins game, right? Call us, and if I don't know the answer, I like to find out who is. I like to connect people, right? Uh, and that's kind of what it's been. I think that's been a similar course throughout the, my life, if not career. What do you think is the biggest reason for your success? Um, I've never been the smartest person. I've actually never been the most athletic person. I've never been the number one person in anything, except for that one day in 1991 when I won the National Prep Wrestling Championships. Besides that one time, I've never been the best at anything that I've done. I've always chased it. I've always chased it, but what I have found is that I have the ability to outlast anybody, right? Anybody. So sometimes while I continue my growth, other people just sort of fall off, right? They take their eye off the prize. And so um, I've had this motor that's just go, 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 chase, right? If I want something, I will, I do joke about this. Whenever I wanted to be good at something, I've become good at it because I have a focus, I go after it, I see who's good at it, uh, who's great at it, and then I try to do what they do, right? I pick the best from best people and I try to implement that. And I just go, go, go until I get it. The only thing I haven't been good at is karaoke. <laughs> um, okay, so what is the greatest lesson you've ever learned, Minor? Uh, so I struggle with this question because when I learn a lesson, I, turn to, I tend to ingrain it and then just move on from there, right? So I have a short-term memory. Um, what I will tell you is that I like to be liked, like many people, right? I like to be liked. And so sometimes that gets in the way from me being direct with people, whether it's a client, seller, buyer, agent, what have you, um, I like to be the nice guy. And so I sugarcoat things when I shouldn't. And um, I had a, a mentor tell me once, he's like, look, you can be your agent's friend and you know, love him right out of the business. Or you can be honest with him, tell him what he's not doing, what he should be doing, and be you know, his boss, which you're supposed to be, and keep him in the business. Same thing with sellers. You know, we can be like, hey, you know what? I knew you, you've raised your kids in this house and it's lovely and it's not, right? Then you need to do X, Y, Z, but you're hesitant to tell them because they put so much sweat equity into them. You're not doing them any favors, right? Yes, you're keeping things nice and everyone's smiling and ha ha. You're not doing them any favors in the process of selling their house, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's been hard for me. Somebody that's, you know, super social and, and really likes to smile a lot, 
giving and be the nice guy. I like to be the nice guy, right? Um, It's tough. So we were joking before, you know, sometimes you have to be the hammer and sometimes I'm just a mallet. Right? It's too soft. I need to be a hammer. So that's one of the lessons that I, I continue to struggle with, but I've been working on it. <laughs> um, so what is something you've done that you feel um, other real producers absolutely should do? I treat it like a business. I treat it like a business. So many realtors, including myself at some point, we say we have a real estate business. Well, it's not a business if it's just you and you're on this hamster wheel, right? And as soon as that hamster wheel stops because you're on vacation, you're sick, your business stops, right? It's not really a business, it's a practice. And so you need to think like a business owner. And I've struggled with these two things. One is you gotta think big, right? And you gotta think big, and it's hard for me because I'm only 5'2". Uh, <laughs> I'm 5'1". <laughs> you gotta think big, right? Yeah, you gotta great. think big, and and I struggle with that. Um, you gotta think big, and you gotta think with the end in mind, right? What is it that we're trying to achieve here? So for us, you know, at one point, one of the big issues that we had is we had this big, big goal, and once we achieved that goal, we had nothing else behind that, right? What are we chasing now? And so you gotta keep pushing yourself to growing, right? And what do smart people say that if your business isn't growing, it's dying, mm. right? Yep. So those are a couple of things I think that uh, that we as a real estate community need to do better of. I think that's fantastic advice. Uh, this is one of my favorite questions. Mm-hmm. What do you want to be remembered for, Minor? So we joke about this on, on our team all the time. When I die, it's not going to say, here lies Minor Herrera, he sold a million houses, right? Nobody cares about that. <laughs> I want to be remembered as a good family man, a good friend. Right, and with our real estate clients, we have an opportunity to do that. Right, to become like family, good friends. Right, that's advising them. Many times we have people asking us, "Tell me, talk to me as if you were a family member." And I was like, "Well, I'm already doing that because that's what we do." Right. So I want to be remembered as a genuine guy um, that was successful, but more importantly, helped other people be successful. Would that be good? Yeah, I think, okay. that's, I think that's a pretty good way to be remembered. Okay. Um, do you have any like fun or hilarious stories you'd want to share? Like maybe one like fun or so interesting story? We sit, our team is a big open office, right? And so when we tell people, hey, if you're going to come in here, you have to be okay with laughter because there's a lot of it and it's loud and almost obnoxious, but it's not. <laughs> uh, and so we have a lot of hilarious stories, um, but let me see if I can think of one. Uh, okay. So we had a seller, he uh, was out of the country, he was from Portugal, I think he was, and an uh, older guy, and he came, and he, he was a tough guy to work with, he had to fax him everything to a travel agency next door, it was crazy. Um, and so we sold his house, it was in downtown Bethesda, I think it was on Chestnut, if I remember correctly, nice house, and we sold it, he came with a friend to help him move the rest of the stuff. And the seller was an older gentleman. His friend was even older. And I was like, this is the guy that you brought to home group? <laughs> and it was like August or something. So it was like 120 degrees and 98% humidity. And when I met this guy, he was dripping with sweat. And they speak uh, Portuguese, which I don't speak, I speak Spanish, um, and a little bit of Norwegian. Um, so I couldn't communicate with this guy. And this guy had his water bottle, he's like, <gasps> <laughs> and I was like, are you okay? And he's like, <clears throat> and uh, the seller's like, no, no, he's fine. He's a tough guy. He's, you know, here to like strap a piano to his back and help him move out. I'm like, I don't think so. I'm like, can we like get him like a cold towel or something? And so he gives him a straw so he doesn't have to lift up his drink. And he's like, <clears throat> and I was like, okay, he's fine. <laughs> he's like, so we're settling tomorrow. Like, yeah, we're settling tomorrow. Things will be great. Um, and it was a problematic settlement. I know that might be surprising the buyer. And the <laughs> it was it was tough. Um, so time for the walkthrough. It's the next morning. It's I just came back from my run and my cell phone rings and I'm like, oh, it's my client. I wonder what's up with him. So I was like, hey, you know, Mr. Seller, what's going on? And he's like, minor. I'm like, uh, you don't sound. Is everything okay? He's like, uh, yeah, but my friend, he died in the house, and I was like. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. The guy that was sweating, the guy that you helped bring move, he he died? He's like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, what did the ambulance say? He's like, what ambulance? I'm like, did you call call an ambulance? ambulance." Oh, no. He's like, no. He said, you said to call me for everything. 
So he called me his realtor. <laughs> Everything. Which makes sense, right? He's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, hang up the phone, call an ambulance. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, can you come over? I'm like, yeah, I can come over. So I sped over there, um, only nine miles over the speed limit because I wanted to take it. Uh, so I sped over there and I got there and there was a cop out front and he's like, halt, who are you? And I was like, well, I'm Wonder, the realtor. Are you looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? <laughs> he goes, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm the realtor for, he's like, for are my you client. family, friends? I'm like, no, I'm his realtor. What else do I need to say? Obviously, I should be on the death, you know, on the scene of this. And he goes, and the guy comes out, he's like, oh, no, that's my realtor. Let him in. Like, it was the most obvious thing. That's normal. And I walked in, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh I'm so sorry like you know I don't even know what to say do you need a hug he was not a huggable guy um, I was like are you I did the hand on the shoulder like is there anything I can do and he's like well can we still settle today <laughs> I was like oh my gosh is this what you're thinking of yes we can settle today but we got to get this body out of here because <laughs> the buyer is coming for the walkthrough and she's gonna freak out right because she's the kind of walks with a white glove and sweeps everything. So oh my goodness. literally the coroner left with the body as the buyer pulled up onto the street and she already started complaining about the garbage out front. And I was just like, yeah, that's Wait. our big problem. <laughs> so For like two minutes earlier. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a crazy, crazy time. Thankfully it all ended well. I mean, not for his friend, may he rest in peace. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you were able to help him do everything. Good Lord. Yes. Um, you guys run into some amazing things. Like, realtor, like you all that do tons of deals, you run into a lot of interesting things. Oh, yeah, like, no. And it's all a matter of perspective, right? It could have been the worst thing that happened to me. Um, but, you know, it was nice that he thought of me to call me before the police or an ambulance or anything like that. Well, it means high level of service. <laughs> well, you heard it here at DC Metro Real Producers. Um, have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot, Miner. Thanks for watching. Yeah, appreciate you. <laughs>